and there you go, you'll have a friend. Hi, I'm Sean McCutcheon, author of the book Coming Together, and welcome to my channel. This video is going to be about how I, a cis straight white man, has personally benefited from feminism. We're approaching this from a purely selfish perspective, and we're going to talk about how other people like me could benefit from feminism. We're doing this because of the huge backlash in the media and online against feminism and women. We're also going to be addressing how feminism can help address the epidemic of loneliness, specifically male loneliness, that is so pervasive in our culture. Additionally, how feminism can help men find their purpose in society. The current trend turning towards men turning their own way or MGTOW and red pill movements have done nothing but harm men through their offers of false hope and creating a false sense of identity which leads them to continue pushing others away, increasing their sense of loss and isolation. Because of this trend of toxicity, this video is going to take a very selfish perspective about what I, a cis straight white man, get out of feminism and what more there is to get out of it. Hopefully this perspective will help others like me uh, who may have a poor view of feminism understand what benefits they may receive by working towards a more egalitarian society. Let's start with the definition of the patriarchy. That's the social structure that we are mostly living under, which states that there's a firm set hierarchy in society that puts everyone into a box. Each box is then assigned a firm set of guidelines that those inside must adhere to, and if they don't, then that person loses value. The relevant examples for this video essay is that of a man and a woman, and that one, the man, is greater than the woman. So if a person has more characteristics that line up with being a man, then that person has more value than someone who has the characteristics of a woman. The problem with this comes into play when you understand that not many people are going to fit solely into either box. As we discussed in my videos on sex and gender, not everything lines up as neatly as the patriarchy would like it to. In case you missed those videos, basically the idea of biological sex is far more varied than a simple understanding would have you believe. In other words, XX does not always equal female and XY does not always equal male. Plus, when you deal with the concept of gender, as it's different from biological sex, you realize it is a social construct defined by the culture and times that we def define it. A perfect example of not fitting neatly into the boxes created by the patriarchy is female athletes. How many get called men, or at least not women, because they have muscles or they're strong? A gross example of this is the growing online of people that swear they can tell a trans person. Feminism, on the other hand, specifically the non-turf variety, realizes that we don't all fit neatly into one box or another. Men can have feelings, women can be strong, etc. Feminism wants to remove these boxes and allow us to be our authentic selves rather than forcing us to be something we're not. Lots of people have talked about the benefits of feminism and the problems with the patriarchy, and you hear a lot of people talking about the problems with feminism without realizing that it's the limitations placed on them by the patriarchy that are causing the problems, specifically the narrow definitions of man and woman. So with all that background in place, let's talk about the point of the video. What purely selfish reasons do I, a cis straight white man support feminism. What do I get out about it? What do I get out of it? And why should I continue to support it? What do I get out of feminism? Well, first off, feelings other than anger. I am allowed to feel sad when I need to, when I can. I'm allowed to feel happy at you know occasions other than sporting events or like large celebrations. I'm allowed to use my feelings to connect to other people. In turn, this has allowed me to have friends that are female. I can open up, I can share, I can talk, I can be a friend to them without anything happening. 
because if one of the problems that gets created by the patriarchy that that gets talked about by all of these MGTOW and red pill circles is male loneliness. And then they tell you that women are only good for one thing and that you cannot be friends with 51% of the population. There's something wrong. You can be friends with women. It's quite possible. You just have to realize that they're people and treat them as such. Mind-blowing ideas. Speaking of friendship, it's allowed me to have closer male friends. It's allowed me to open up to my friends, to ask for help when I need it, to you know be there when they need help, to offer assistance, to offer assistance and not see them as weaker because they need help because we all need help. And this idea that we can get through everything on our own without the help of anyone else is ludicrous. We need people in our lives. We, you know, need to have friends that we can count on. And we need to be able to be there when our friends need to depend upon us too. The epitome of this in, in my, in a lot of society's opinion, is out of a partner. So I have been married for over 24 years. My wife is my partner. She has always been my partner. We have always addressed every problem in confronting that problem, as opposed to how we must fight each other or how, you know, I as the man must be dominant and none of that happens. She's my partner. When we need to address an issue, we address an issue. We have been there for each other in times in which we have been scared, from which times we have been sad. We have supported each other through hard financial times and we have celebrated when things have been easy. As you can tell from one of my previous videos, you know, we could probably go for more of those easy times, but you know, such is life. Another benefit to feminism that I've personally enjoyed is that my worth as a person is not dependent upon what I earn. The friends that I've had in my life, the actual friends that I've had in my life, uh, to include my partner, have liked me no matter what my income was, no matter what financially I could bring to the table. Now, that's not been everyone in my life, but they're also not friends of mine. So, you know, it is good knowing that I can be accepted for who I am and what I am, regardless of what I may or may not bring to the table. Now, that has meant in a lot of ways that in a positive way, I have been able to, when I had one job that didn't, that, that was not very good for my mental health, we'll say. Uh, my wife who was employed at the time said, you know what, for your job, I didn't have another job to go to. There was nothing for me to do. I had no backup plan. The gift that year was for me to quit my job, and I did. My mental health was so much better for that. And whenever I have pursued careers that I thought would take us to a much better place financially, she's been there to support me through that as well. And that obviously those two were not connected. They were not related, right? <laughs> but, but, you know, she has been my partner and she has stuck by me no matter what through sickness and health, through richer, through poorer, right? Um, that is one thing that, that if either of us just looked at the other one, like, like an object, like I, my value is only determined by what I earn or 
her value is only determined on what how she fits like a trad wife perspective or whatever then our relationship would not have lasted very long and i would not have a partner speaking of which when i came home from a deployment another benefit i could talk about my feelings i could address the issues that i faced while i was deployed i could talk about those things i could talk about those things with other vets i could open up about my feelings you know, previous generations, we used to idolize, you know, the, the vets that would come home and then they wouldn't talk about anything. Well, that's because they did have a problem. And he told them they weren't allowed to talk, that they had to stuff it all down inside. And that ended up killing a lot of them. So knowing that I can come home and I can talk, knowing that I can come home and express myself, knowing that I can come home and talk to other vets, that has been another big benefit, knowing that I don't, that, that I am allowed to feel my emotions and don't have to stuff them down has been another huge benefit that I've had from feminism. It was female ministers when I was younger that encouraged me to speak up about how I'm feeling, to feel something that I don't have to just bottle it all up, right? The women in my life are the ones that told me that I can feel that way. And playing off of that and echoing kind of everything I've been saying up to this point, showing that vulnerability to my friends and no one will be judged lesser for it. Being able to see the vulnerability in my friends and not judging them for it. Helping them to get stronger and knowing that they can help me get stronger and help me get better and I can help them get better. Having that closeness, having that intimacy with my friends of all genders, knowing that that is something that I can, you know, have in my friendships and my relationships, that has been a huge benefit that I've received from. So what more could I get out of feminism? Again, purely selfish, right? We're not talking about what women could get out of feminism. We're talking about what I can get out of feminism. First off, more freedom of choice of careers. That may not affect me so much right now because I enjoy my actual day-to-day -day job. Looking at my subscriber count, you will know that this is not my day-to-day -day job. But looking at that and my career progression, knowing that I didn't have to always stay in a job, knowing that I didn't have to perform certain types of careers, knowing that would be better for everyone, right? We are no longer then dictating who has to be breadwinner, who has to do this, who has to stay home and take care of the kids. We are no longer predefining the roles that you have to play for the rest of your life just based on your birth. Another benefit that I would have found immensely beneficial but didn't have the advantage of is parental leave. I took leave when my children were born and I spent a lot of time with them when they were very little babies, but I didn't have mandated paternal leave. There's also not mandated maternity leave, but that would also be beneficial. But again, we're looking at this from a selfish perspective. If you're a parent or if you want to be a parent, if you want to be a dad, and not just a donor, then you're going to want to connect with your children. You're going to want to be in their lives. Your children are very interesting people. They are very different from you. They have their own thoughts and ideas, their own experiences. They have opinions that are different from yours. They're going to be very interesting people. And if you don't take the time to get to know them, you're missing out. And that's really sad. Again, looking at it as a man, looking at it as a very selfish way, if you look at all of these concerns from the MGTOW movements and the Red Pill movements, a lot of the lip service they provide to male suicide rates, male incarceration rates, custody battles, a lot of all of these would be addressed by dismantling the patriarchy. All of these 
would be addressed by dismantling the idea that men are not allowed to talk about their emotions, that they're not allowed to deal with these things that, that are causing them such stress, that would allow them to form connections with friends, that would allow them to form connections with other people, that would allow them to take non-traditional roles, roles that they may find more satisfactory, roles that they may find more happy. It would also encourage them to find someone who's a partner rather than someone they have to take care of like a child, right? Rather than someone that they have to pay everything for and for whom they expect to just be a domestic servant. All of these problems that are created by the patriarchy would be dismantled by moving more towards feminism and helping to encourage a more equitable environment because that's what feminism is. Spoiler, it's creating more equity between everyone. So what can you do to help dismantle the patriarchy? First off, in your own mind, dismantle the idea of what a man has to be or what a woman has to be. Realize that we are all individual people, that we do have to be there for one another, and that we can accept each other with our differences. We don't have to force people to be something they are not. Which means, like the things you like, don't be shy about it. If you're a geek, be a geek. If you something love it you know you don't have to you don't have to stuff your emotions down just because society says so other things you can do if you're at work and you see someone completely ignore a woman in a meeting then call them out I've done this at my work several times I've had female friends of mine that have said something. The boss will not hear it. And so I will repeat it saying, this is so-and-so's idea. And the boss loves it, even though he didn't hear it when she said it. So the first thing is, is help women be heard. So when, if, if you're at work, they're trying to speak up, help them speak up. Now, that doesn't mean that you should necessarily talk. If a woman is speaking, you don't need to interrupt her to talk about things, right? Um, what women need, let them take the lead in a feminist movement. Uh, this is something I'll talk about more in my allyship video, which theoretically will be next, which the way I put out videos could be in 2026. While talking about work, share what you make. In the United States, you are allowed to share what you earn with your coworkers, with your friends. You are allowed to share how much you make. And if you talk about how much you make, then it'll be easier for people to work together and negotiate for earning a pay that they deserve, earning a pay that is commensurate with the work they put in. So it sounds kind of strange, I know, but if you talk about your pay, it will help everyone and elevate everyone. And another thing is just get to know women on a personal level, not just ones that you find attractive, just get to know women as a person because you will find out that they are people that they have their own likes and dislikes, their own hobbies, their own interests. And you know, you'll know you find out that you might have a lot in common with some of them and you might become friends with them. And there you go, you'll have a friend. Going to the whole, you should make friends with a woman, even the ones you're not attracted to, you need to realize, even if your friends are attractive, that they don't owe you their body. They don't owe you anything. If you're a friend, you're a friend. Be a friend. If you wouldn't treat a male friend like that, 
don't treat a female friend like that. Speaking about a woman's autonomy, if you see a woman being harassed or someone assaulting a woman, stand up to them. Uh, stand up, make sure that that harassment stops. On the flip side, if you see someone harassing a man, step in and stop that. Harassing someone, assaulting someone, these are not good things. If you see them, stop them, say something. As always, though, be safe. It's not always safe to do that. I recognize. However, you know, at the very least, you can call the cops or something. The last thing is vote and vote for people who will not take away a woman's autonomy. Vote for people who won't try to take away women's choices. Vote for people who won't remove women's ability to get a divorce, who will allow women to own their homes, who will force them to be stay-at-home wives. You know, unfortunately, these are a lot at the, at the polls this year and for the last few years. So I anticipate they'll be on the polls for the next few years too. But if there is a candidate who wants to take away rights from women, don't vote for them. Vote for the other person. And, and if I ever do a video on the politics aspect, not voting is really only empowering the people who want to take away the rights of women, who want to take away the rights of individuals, who want to take away the rights of people. Um, so vote, that is something you can do. Um, again, uh, so that's actually the end of this video. I do address these in my book. Uh, so if you do wanna pick them up, uh, feel free. Uh, it is again, Coming Together by Sean McCutcheon. I hope you're all doing well. Look out for each other. Take care of each other. Uh, support each other. Um, love you. Have a great night. Take care.